Hello there and welcome back. Since it is almost the end of the year, I thought we could do a little recap of the Google updates you might have missed in 2022. We all know some updates are far more interesting than others. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the top 10 Google updates for teachers. We're gonna break it up by app. So we're gonna focus on Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Forms. We're gonna kick it off with Google Docs because that's where the most updates have occurred in 2022. From my Google Drive, I'm just gonna open up a new blank Google Doc. Update number one is using Google Meet within Google Docs, but also Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Jamboard. Within Google Docs, you will notice up at the top right next to the share button, there is a Google Meet icon. If you click this, First, you will see a list of any upcoming meetings already on your calendar, but you also have the option to start a new meeting or use a meeting code to join an existing meeting. Just to show you what this looks like, I'm gonna start a new meeting and it's gonna open up a sidebar with a new Google Meet. From here, of course, I can share the link with others, invite them to the call, I can present my screen. I have all the same settings that exist within Google Meet. And if at any time I want to open this in a new tab, I can go ahead and I'm going to close this out. I can click the move to a tab button up at the top right and it will open up the Google Meet full screen in a new tab. But I also can do the opposite. So I can take another Google Meet and move it within Google Docs. So I'm gonna open up a new tab with Google Meet and I'm gonna start a new meeting, not within Google Docs. From here, while this meeting is going, I'm gonna come back to Google Docs, come back to the Google Meet dropdown, and now I have the option to bring the call here. So that's going to move Google Meet over to the sidebar. And I'm not presenting my screen, even though it almost seems like I am because Google Meet is within Google Docs, but it just allows me to view the meeting while also viewing the Google Doc, which is super helpful if you're meeting with say team teachers for collaborative planning or other staff members for some sort of meeting and you need access to either a Google Doc, Google Slides, Google Sheets, or Google Jamboard. Update number two is adding chips. As much as I wish this were referring to potato chips, really like chips. It is not. Chips within Google Docs are just links or more information for contacts, other files, dates, and places. Within Google Docs, there are a few different ways you can add a chip. First, you can come to insert, hover over smart chips, and then you will see the options for people, file, calendar event, and place. But you can also type the at sign in order to insert a chip directly within the Google Doc. So I'm gonna type the at sign. And then from here, I can start to type someone's name in order to insert a contact. So for example, the Emerson's 2020, and it now has it kind of highlighted. And if I hover over it, it will show me more detailed information on that contact that works the same way for adding a link to another file or a link to a calendar event or a specific location. Just to show you an example of how you might use this, this is a collaborative planning agenda, which I have as a freebie on my website. It's just a template that you can go in and edit. But for example, if we have this upcoming field trip to the Natural History Museum, I might add in a chip for contact information for the museum or maybe the location of the museum or the calendar event. That way, any of my team teachers that have access to this Google Doc have the information as well as anyone I share the doc with, such as administrators or maybe special educators that are gonna be joining on the field trip. And it just makes sure that everyone's on the same page. So if you are interested in grabbing this template, I will have the link for that down in the description box. Update number three is adding dropdowns. Now, a dropdown is exactly what it sounds like. It is a list of options to choose from, but they are color coded, which personally I think makes it that much better. I color code all my info. Just like with the chips, you can add a dropdown a few different ways. The first way is to come to insert and then select dropdown. From here, you can either choose a pre-made dropdown such as project status or review status, but you can also create a new one. 
Just to show you another way to add a drop down, once again, if you type the at sign and then type drop down, that option will come up as well. Here's what it looks like when you create a new drop down. I'm going to click new drop down and I can give it a name. So let's say lesson status. From here, I might have need to plan and we're going to make that red. We'll do the lighter red. Planned, we'll make that yellow and then taught will make that green. I can add more options if I want. I also can click and drag in order to reorder them, but I'm going to click save. And from here, I might have a list of my lessons. So I might have unit one, lesson one, and then I'm going to actually just copy this and come underneath and paste it. And I might change this to lesson two, lesson three, and we'll do lesson four, just as an example. So maybe for these four lessons, I've taught lesson one, I have planned lessons two and three, and then I need to plan lesson four. So this could be a way for you and your team teachers to keep track of lesson status, or maybe you yourself are gonna use this to keep track of where you're at in your scope and sequence or your to-do list. There are so many different ways that you can use this. Update number four is adding building blocks. I like to think about building blocks as almost like templates within Google Docs. Just like with the chips and the drop downs, there are different ways you can add building blocks within your Google Doc. First, you can come to insert, hover over building blocks, and then select from the list. But you can also type the at sign and then start to type the name of the building block and it will appear as well just to show you how you might use some of these. First, meeting notes. It will allow you to select a meeting from your Google Calendar. So for example, collaborative planning meeting, I can select that. It's gonna put all the chips in there for the date and the name of the meeting, but it also gives me a spot to type in attendees, notes, and then any action items. So it just makes it that much easier to take notes during a meeting. I just had a couple of notes, I'm gonna grab a pen and Another option is an email draft. So I'm gonna come back to insert building blocks and select email draft. From here, you can add in the chips for the people you're gonna send it to and type out the email. Once you're done, you can click the preview in Gmail and it will actually transfer that entire email into your Gmail. However, you may be thinking, well, why don't I just do it in Gmail? And honestly, I kind of feel the same way, but I will say it might be a little bit easier to format your email within Google Docs in terms of text color and bolding and even adding images in a line with your email. I find that that's easier within Google Docs than Gmail, but other than that, not a huge advantage. Another one you might use is a product roadmap. So I'm gonna insert that one. And from here you have projects, which you could of course rename to be lessons. And then you can type the lessons or even link directly to the file. So if I have a set of Google Slides for a specific lesson, I can add a chip in order to link to that file and then take notes. I can change the status. And if, if I want to, I could change these names. So instead of not started in progress and launched, maybe I change launch to taught and click save. We're going to do apply to all. So this might be a tool that you use within your team teachers or just by yourself in order to keep track of your lessons. It's similar to the drop downs, but it already has the table set up for you. So either option would work. Update number five is adding emojis, which isn't a huge deal. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it does make it a little bit easier. I used to use a Chrome extension to find emojis and then copy and paste them within Google Docs. So this is a little bit easier, but you know, it is what it is. In order to insert an emoji, I'm gonna come to insert, select emoji. But once again, I can also type the at sign, start to type emoji and it will appear as well. What I do really like is that you can search. So for example, French fries, and then you can insert the emoji. It's easier than trying to scroll through and find the one, but this is obviously helpful for you. If you're doing things with students, you might wanna add emojis in, or if you're drafting those emails, you might wanna add those emojis in there as well. 
Also, this one kind of goes with the emojis, although it's a little bit different. If you are grading student assignments within Google Docs, obviously you can add comments, but you can also add emoji reactions. So if you highlight text within the Google Doc and then hover over the smiley face, it will allow you to add an emoji reaction and students might find that, you know, a little bit more engaging than your typical comments. Next, we are moving on to Google Slides. We're gonna come to new Google Slides. Now, just like with Google Docs, you can access Google Meet within Google Slides as well. So you will notice that same Google Meet icon up at the top. Update number six is collapsing the film strip. Now, technically this was released at the end of 2021, so I'm cheating a little bit, but let me have this one. Just like with many of the other updates, you can show or hide the film strip a few different ways. The easiest way is just coming down to the film strip and clicking the arrow that will hide it. You can click the arrow again to show it, but you also can come to view and then you can check or uncheck where it says show film strip. Now, the main reason I think this is a great update for teachers is because we know that we love to edit slides in real time with students to show examples, maybe establish an anchor chart, maybe show them how they're gonna complete an assignment. And sometimes they get distracted by all the slides they're seeing on the side. So if you are editing a slide, I do recommend hiding that film strip. That way students are fully focused on the one slide you are editing. Update number seven is inserting an image placeholder. Once again, technically released at the end of 2021, but there were not a lot of great Google Slides updates in 2022. So we're stretching it a little bit. Stretch it, a little stretch. So an image placeholder makes it really easy for students to insert images or teachers, but mostly students using the theme builder. So in order to access this, we're gonna come to view and then we're gonna select Theme Builder. This is like your master slides. They've changed the name of it over the years, but now it's called your Theme Builder. Within your Theme Builder, you have your different layouts. So right now we're using this first layout that has the title and the subtitle. I'm just going to select both of these boxes and kind of shrink them over to the side. Sure, that looks fine. In order to add an image placeholder, we're gonna to come to the image button and we're gonna select the drop down. I can insert an image from here, but I also can insert an image placeholder. So this is almost like a frame that then you can just insert an image into. I can select rectangle, rounded rectangle, or oval. Let's just do rectangle. Then I can click and drag in order to create it the size that I want. And you will notice it's gray, but it has the little image icon. From here, if I close out of the theme builder and I come back to my slide, which I'm using that layout from the theme builder. Now, if I or my students want to insert an image, all I have to do is click the image button and then I can choose to upload from my computer, search the web and so on. So let's search the web. I'm kind of hungry if you can't tell. Let's do hamburger. Okay, I can insert, that one looks good. Click and it's going to replace that image placeholder with the actual image. I mentioned this makes it much easier for students. I know it never failed that I would want my students to insert images as examples in their assignment. And maybe I would say insert three images and they would insert two or they would insert one or none. So by adding those image placeholders, it kind of prompts your students to actually follow through with that task. You can resize them or add as many on the slide as you want. So it's great for digital assignments, but it's also great for you as the teacher. If you plan on using images within your slides, you can create those templates and then easily insert them as you go. Moving on to Google Sheets, I am very sad to report that there are nearly no interesting updates. Now, you can use those chips just like you can within Google Docs. You also can use Google Meet just like you can within Google Docs and Google Slides. Other than that, the only exciting update is that they have doubled the cell limit but it already was like thousands and thousands and thousands of rows that you were never gonna use all of anyway, so it is what it is. Update number eight is new theme fonts. You may remember Google Forms, you used to be limited to like four different font options and none of them were great, but now you can actually choose any Google font, which is very exciting. In order to do this, just click on the theme button up at the top. It looks like the little paint palette. From here, not only can you change the overall 
font for the form, but you can also customize it for the header, questions, and the text. So you have a little bit more customization here. Once you click from the header or any of the other sections, you will see a drop down of all those Google fonts, and you can even add more fonts, which you can do within Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, etc. But keep in mind, you cannot, at least at this time, add your own custom fonts. You're just choosing fonts from Google's library. And similarly, you also can now customize the font size. Update number nine is using rich text formatting. This is what allows you to bold and italicize different fonts within the text of your Google form. So once you've set up your fonts the way that you want them for the overall form, Within the form, you can always highlight text and then you will see the rich text formatting bar. You can bold, you can italicize, underline, and you can even add links. This also works within the description text as well. You can even add a numbered list or a bulleted list. This just allows you to customize directions, especially for students, a little bit more. You can make it a little bit more clear for them by bolding certain things. Maybe you're gonna link to other assignments or other files that you want them to view, but it just gives you a little bit more control. And finally, update number 10 is using locked mode on Chromebooks. Locked mode essentially prevents students from opening up other tabs while completing a Google form. So if it's going to be a graded assignment, you can set it up where you get notified if students try to open up another tab. But this update can only be used if you have a Google Workspace for Education account, which good news, if you have a Google account through your school or district, it most likely is a Google Workspace for Education account. But you also need a Chromebook managed by your school for each student, which I obviously do not have, so I can't show you exactly how to do this, but I will link down below a set of directions that will show you exactly how to do it. But that is it. Those are the top 10 Google updates you might have missed in 2022 and the end of 2021 because we cheated a little bit. If you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this, please leave a comment down below, first of all, but also give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I will have the links down in the description box for that free collaborative planning template, as well as how to use locked mode on Chromebooks. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.